Do subscribe to Ikeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering, HSE and IIT JE main and advanced videos. Hi friends, in the last lecture we have studied about the physical properties of alkene and before that we have also got to know that what are the methods of preparation of alkenes. And now we are going to specifically talk about what are the reactions of alkene or what are the chemical properties of alkene. So let us talk about that. So here are the few reactions or the chemical properties that we are going to talk about for alkenes and uh, starting with the first one there are few uh, chemical properties that we are going to look about and um, we are going also to discuss about the details in that. So starting with the first one and let me give you the small glimpse that what we are going to learn about. So starting with that is hydrogenation process and uh, as the name itself suggests that uh, hydrogenation means introduction of hydrogen molecules in the carbon carbon double bond of uh, the alkene so we are going to do a detailed analysis of that also but uh, moving towards the next one that we are going to study that is halogenation process uh, the third one would be Hydrohalogenation process and the fourth one would be sulfonation process or the reaction of alkene with uh, sulfuric acid. For the fifth one we could call it as ozonolysis and uh, talking about the next one that is oxidation or we could also call it as hydro um, uh, that is uh, oxidation in this uh, method that is oxidation so these are the uh, things that uh, these are the few uh, chemical properties that we are going to talk about that is hydrogenation halogenation uh, hydrohalogenation sulfonation or uh, introduction of uh, sulfuric acid in alkene uh, ozonolysis that is introduction of ozone in alkene and uh, ultimately that is oxidation so these are the uh, chemical properties or these are the chemical reactions that we are going to talk about so starting with the first one that is uh, hydrogenation process So talking about the hydrogenation process, it is very simple to understand. Uh, it is nothing but the introduction of the hydrogen molecule uh, to the alkene and in which what will happen is the carbon-carbon double bond will convert into a saturated carbon-carbon single bond. So let me give you an example and let us discuss about that uh, uh, in that case only. Suppose if we have uh, an alkene, uh, for generally we could write it is in this manner that is Suppose this is the alkene that we have and as we could see that there is carbon-carbon double bond over here and uh, the thing that we have to do is we have to introduce the hydrogen and uh, this is the hydrogen molecule that I have introduced over here and uh, but this reaction wouldn't take place by its own we have to provide a particular catalyst for that and suppose in this case suppose if I am writing the reaction over here like uh, in presence of iron nickel and providing a certain amount of heat so uh, this is the reaction that we have already did in the preparation of alkene so if you notice this then this is the reaction that we have did in the preparation of alkene so now what we are doing is we are uh, now making the other chemicals that is uh, involved in this process so as to convert the alkene to other chemical uh, so in this case basically what will happen the hydrogenation process will take place where uh, among this double bond uh, as you could see for carbon carbon and one of the h would come over here while the other h would come over here making the molecule to be form this that is r c h single bond c h r dash and this uh, r can be an alkyl group or it can be in hydrogen also and uh, talking about the hydrogen that has been replaced over here so this is the hydrogen that has been uh, replaced over here and while breaking the bonds so in this process what will, what is happening is an alkene is being now converted into an alkene so this kind of process where hydrogen is involved is known as basically hydrogenation process so this was a general reaction so let me give you a short example of that suppose if we have a molecule like this one In terms of IPC name, the, this would be called as propylene, and uh, 
the rules of IPC is also we have did a lecture, separate lecture on that and uh, we have also did the, the nomenclature of uh, the alkenes uh, and also that was a separate lecture. And now what we are going to do and now what we are going to do is we are going to react it with hydrogen that is H2 molecule and that also in presence of a catalyst uh, name it as uh, I would write over here as RNA nickel and I would provide a certain temperature that is it could be 453 Kelvin or uh, 463 Kelvin it depends on the uh, condition that we are taking or the reactants that we are taking so in this process the simple thing that will happen that uh, this will undergo uh, an addition reaction and uh, in this addition reaction as we know addition reactions are those reactions in which we could see that the number of product is less than the number of reactant and, and moreover we could see that the double bond is been converted into single, single bond or uh, the triple bond is converted into double or the triple bond is converted into single bond. So in this case also the, uh, the reason would be the same and uh, the process that would happen is hydrogenation and the answer that would, we could get is CH3, CH, this double bond would break into single bond as CH2 over here. But talking about the hydrogen, one hydrogen would come over here and the other one would here. So making this molecule to be as, so we could write it in this manner or we could mention it as CH3, CH2, CH3. Making this molecule to be basically propane. So this is what we have did and we have discussed about the hydrogenation process. And uh, talking about uh, the next one that is, uh, we could take uh, various examples and in fact, uh, we could make a double bond to uh, a triple bond to a double bond but using uh, the specific catalyst that we are using that is Lindas catalyst that is uh, introduction of uh, palladium or uh, in presence of CaCO3 and lead acetate. So even that alkyne can be converted into first alkene and that alkene can be further converted into uh, that is uh, alkane and also the, all the process that takes place during conversion of an alkyne to an alkane is hydrogenation process only. So this is what we have discussed about the hydrogenation process. So now let us discuss about the next one that is we are talking about hydrogenation process. So let us talk about that. So now we are going to discuss about the halogenation process and what is actually halogenation process. Uh, in terms of an alkene, uh, so what we are going to talk is uh, the introduction of the halogen that is a halogen molecule that is a X2 in general if you could say. So the introduction of X2 molecule in an alkene so as to form a basically a vicinal dihalide is basically known as halogenation process. And what is that? Let me give you an example for that. Suppose if we have an alkene, uh, like uh, a general, I'm asking about, I'm talking about a general uh, alkene, we could write in this form. So this is an alkene and on which we have to uh, follow an halogenation process, that is introduction of X2 suppose. But this reaction won't take place by its own, it would require a particular solvent and that basically solvent is basically uh, known as CCL4 or we could say as carbon uh, tetrachloride. So this is the solvent that we have to use and uh, in that uh, case uh, this the reaction would take space and uh, the product would be in this case the double bond would break into carbon carbon single bond but this 2x just like similar to that of the uh, uh, hydrogenation or uh, hydrogenation process so it will take in this manner where we could see that one among the halogen have took its place over here while the another would have been substituted over here. So in this case the addition reaction takes place just like similar to that of the um, hydrogenation process. So this was a general reaction where I have discussed about. So let me give you an example so that we could understand it in a better way. And uh, so this is the one which has been forming a vicinal dihalide. So let me uh, give you an example. Suppose uh, the reactant uh, of which we have to do an halogenation process uh, that is for an alkene would be uh, this one that is so this molecule can be called as basically a but 2 in and suppose if I am reacting uh, 
the butene with an halogen molecule like uh, suppose Br2. And that too in presence of basically uh, that is CCA4 or carbon tetrachloride. So in this case what will happen the CCA4 is acting like a solvent and uh, while uh, the butene is reacting with a bromine molecule and what will happen is same like the halogenation uh, same like the halogenation process the halogenation process also will take place where we could see that the double bond uh, will break into carbon carbon single bond and the two uh, bromine atoms would be substituted over here so making this to be formed as CH3 CH this double bond would break into single bond CH and again for the CH3 we could write over here as a methyl group and uh, the further thing the bromine atoms would attach over here so this is the molecule that we have got and talking about uh, the classification of this kind of uh, uh, dihalides these are basically known as vicinal dihalides and this is also we have discussed in our uh, previous lecture so these are the two halogen atoms that are being uh, attached to the carbon atom which are basically adjacent to each other and that's the reason that these are called as vicinal dihalides by talking about the IUPC nomenclature uh, we could name it in uh, like IUPC nomenclature suppose for that we have to number it so suppose if this is the carbon number one two three four then the name of this product that has been found over here can be named it as two comma three dibromo and the total number of carbon that have been present in straight uh, continuous strain is basically four making this to be called as a parent chain would be basically butane so this is how we have discussed about uh, the halogenation process so it was one of the most simplest one in fact we could uh, try this with the various examples and uh, the same process would happen that is uh, the uh, we will get a vicinal dihalide but talking about the halogenation process whenever it comes to an halogenation process or whenever an halogenium molecule is been reacting with uh, the alkene the main thing is what about the reactivity which molecule or which halogen molecule will be the most reactive compared to the other one as we know as fluorine bromine chlorine and iodine these are the molecules that we know uh, they are reactive but uh, among this which one would be more reactive when it comes to the halogen molecule so for that uh, it has been um, that is uh, chlorine is the one which uh, reacts more uh, than that of the bromine and then that of the iodine so in this case basically bromine we have used we could also used uh, have uh, we could also used uh, chlorine and the chlorine would have given us more reactivity and uh, and hence uh, the formation of fluorine would be possible over here that is a uh, vicinal dihalide or we could say as vicinal dichloride so that also could have been possible so the reactivity i would write over here as when it comes to reactivity Cl2 molecule is much more reactive than Br2 molecule than that of basically I2 molecule. So this was the reactivity of halogenation. So now we have uh, now uh, till we have discussed about the two processes or the two uh, chemical properties of the alkene. That is the first one was hydrogenation and the next one that we have did um, now is basically uh, halogenation. So now let us talk about what is uh, hydrohalogenation. So this is the third property that we are going to talk about. Hydrohalogenation. So previously we have did uh, hydrogenation process. The second we have did uh, halogenation process, and now we are going to do hydrohalogenation process. So again, it is a kind of an addition reaction. But instead of this, we are not using only a hydrogen molecule or only uh, that is a halogen molecule. In this case, we are using an hydrohalogen. Yes, the thing is we could use HCl, we could use HBr, we could use HI. So in this case also the uh, halogenation, like just like the halogenation and hydrogenation process, the addition reaction will take place. But the molecule that we are talking about is basically uh, a non-polar. The reason behind that is because when we are talking about H2, so H2 is also basically non-polar and uh, The molecule that we are talking about that is HCl, HBr and HI, this are the polar molecule and uh, previously we have used basically H2 and uh, uh, Cl2 or Br2, any kind of halogen which are basically non-polar. So in this case the possibility would have been uh, the same that uh, any one of the atom would have attached on the uh, double bond but the answer or but the product that we could have got like a uh, alkene and uh, in 
in alkene when it undergoes hydrogenation it forms an alkene and they are the basically the two hydrogen atoms that are attached over the carbon carbon number one and talking about the halogenation process uh, suppose if we are using chlorine molecule then among the carbon carbon double bond uh, the any of the chlorine would attach over the uh, one carbon and while the other chlorine attached over the other carbon and which would be adjacent to each other so what if we are using hydrohalogenation process so this is the thing that i am going to talk about so let me give an example for this and let us see that uh, what kind of the protocol that we could get or what are the precautions and what are the different conditions that we have to maintain so as to form a product so let me give you an example for that suppose if we have an alkene i am generally talking uh, suppose if we have an alkene like uh, like this one if uh, we would discuss like So this is the alkene that we have and for which we have to do basically a uh, hydrohalogenation process that is we have to use hydrogen as well as an halogen so in this case we could write it as uh, by introduction of an hydrohalogen that is uh, or we could say it as hydrogen halide like this one so since if this would be a symmetrical molecule then what would happen that is and i could see that uh, this carbon and this carbon both consist of uh, one one hydrogen each so in this case there won't be any kind of priority that we have to take or any kind of precaution that we have to take uh, among this what will happen is one h will attach over this carbon while one x will attach over this carbon atom forming a compound known as r c h this double bond would break into carbon carbon single bond r dash and this is h while one of the hydrogen will uh, among hydrogen and uh, halogen atom hydrogen would attach over here while halogen would attach over here so this is the thing that we are uh, we will get but this molecule can be symmetrical also as well as unsymmetrical also because we have mentioned uh, here the uh, general uh, alkene but what if we have this molecule let me give you an example that what i am talking about suppose if we have a very simple alkene that we know that is a ch2 double bond ch2 and in this process suppose if i am reacting this with uh, like hbr and hydrogen halide known as uh, hydrogen bromide and in this process suppose if i am reacting this so what i will, would get the mechanism would be the similar thing that is one of the h would go over here while this br would go over here making the product to be formed as Earlier it was CH2, but because of one hydrogen has been uh, came over here, so therefore this would be CH3, while this would be converted into CH2 beer. Making this to be called as uh, basically one bromo methane. So the name of this is one bromo methane and. Uh, even though suppose if i would say that one hydrogen would have been attached over here while the bromine would attach over here the same product that we would have got this is because we have used basically a symmetrical alkene so this was basically symmetrical alkene suppose what if we have took uh, an unsymmetrical alkene and what in that case what process would happen so let me tell you about that Suppose the alkene that we have took over here is this one that is this is the alkene that we have took and uh, in this case basically again suppose if I am using HBr as a hydrogen halide so what would be the product there are basically two possibilities and what are those two possibilities let me talk about that suppose if this hydrogen would have attached over this carbon and this bromine would have attached on this CH2 then the product that we could get is basically it would be in this form that is CH3 CH2 because hydrogen has attached over here so therefore this would become CH2 and the carbon carbon double bond would have been broken into carbon carbon single bond as you could see over here and this CH2 will have an attachment with this bromine making this to be have a structure like CH3, CH2, CH2, Br. So this is a possibility that we could get. But what if the hydrogen is attached over here and the bromine is attached over here? 
So therefore the product in that case we would have got CH3 CH here it would be Br while here it would be because of hydrogen has been attached over here so therefore this would be CH3. So now these are the two possible products that we could get. So among these two possible products which is the most predominant or which one is the more which will be formed in a major quantity or which has the most chance to form. So the answer is this one. Yes. So there are certain rules that we are going to talk about that why this is being formed uh, more predominantly compared to that of this one. The reason behind that is it has been following a Marconi rule. And what is Marconi rule? Let me tell you about that also while using the same example that I have to go over here. So let us discuss about what is Marconi rule. <clears throat> So now we are going to discuss about Markovnikov's rule and what is Markovnikov's rule? Let us write the statement of that also and let us see what is uh, it states about. So this is the thing that we are uh, talking about and what does it state that uh, according to Markovnikov's rule when an unsymmetrical alkene is reacted with an unsymmetrical reagent then the negative part of the reagent will attack that carbon-carbon double bond uh, atom having less hydrogen atom. So let me uh, take this example that we have did earlier. So this is an example which is following uh, basically Markovnikov's rule and in this case we could also find a product uh, which uh, will form a basically minor product. So suppose in this case if I would uh, see that this is the carbon-carbon double bond and this is basically an unsymmetrical molecule. So basically I would write over here that this is basically an unsymmetrical molecule. The reason behind that is this is an unsymmetrical alkene is as you could see that uh, this is the double du carbon double double bond as you could see here carbon double bond and suppose if we divide this in this way as you could see over here suppose if I have divided over this case so on the right hand side you could find that is there is only one CH2 while on the left hand side you could find there are basically two carbon atoms so therefore this is basically known as unsymmetrical alkene so this is the unsymmetrical alkene and in this case this is known as the unsymmetrical reagent the reason behind that is in halogenation process we have used H2 as a molecule and in this case H2 is a symmetrical molecule where on the left hand side and on the, on the right hand side if we divide in that manner so the both will uh, in, in the both the side we would obtain basically hydrogen I'm talking about in bromination also or in halogenation process in both the cases uh, that is on the left hand side or on the right hand side the same atoms that we are going to observe if we divide it uh, symmetrically but this is not we would get a symmetrical molecule the reason behind that is suppose if I have divided in this manner so therefore on the left hand side I would have got hydrogen atom and on the right hand side uh, we would get, get a basically a bromine atom so making this to be called as unsymmetrical reagent so the Markovnikov, so he, he was scientist and he had discovered in this manner that um, when an unsymmetrical alkene is reacted with an unsymmetrical reagent, then the negative part of the reagent and talking about the negative part of the reagent in case of HBr, we know that hydrogen is more uh, electropositive compared to that of the bromine because bromine is more electronegative. But uh, in a molecule like HBr, this H will have partially positive charge while this bromine will have partially negative charge. So according to the statement, the negative part of the region, that is I am talking about HBr, then the negative part of the region will attack that carbon-carbon double bond. As you can see here, over here, that is carbon-carbon double bond is been present and it has no relation with carbon-carbon single bond because this rule is only made up for the carbon-carbon double bond or basically we could say it specifically for an unsymmetrical alkene. 
So therefore, in this case, we see the negative part of the region that is the BR will attack that carbon or it will attach to uh, that carbon atom where we could see less number of hydrogen. So in this case, we see if we see that there is only one hydrogen with this carbon and there are two hydrogen with uh, this carbon. So that's the reason that bromine will attach on that carbon which has less hydrogen compared to the, that of the other one. So that's the reason bromine is the one that will attach over here. And now the hydrogen is the one which will attach over this carbon atom, making the product to be like CH3 that is here. CH was been attached by or was been attacked by Br2, Br as you could see over here. So therefore CH has been attached with Br and CH2 has attached with, with the hydrogen atom. So this is the one that is CH2 is now been converted into CH3 after the hydro halogenation process. So that makes us to form a major product and that is the reason that this has been forming as a major product while this is even this has a chance to form a product but uh, the thing is uh, there is the minor quantity of uh, the one bromo uh, propane while two bromo propane is the one which will form a major product so that is basically mark on your school that i was um, trying to discuss so this happens where we could get basically a secondary alkyl halide. As you could see over here that uh, this is a carbon atom which has been attached to two different carbon atoms and the bromine has been attached to that carbon atom which is basically attached to two different carbon atoms. So this is basically a secondary halide but this is called to be basically primary alkyl halide. So what if happens if we react an unsymmetrical alkene uh, with an uh, unsymmetrical reagent and in that case suppose if we don't need uh, a secondary alkyl halide because uh, in normal condition, it will follow Markovnikov's rule and secondary alkyl halide will be obtained. But what if, if we need in this process basically the primary alkyl halide? So in this case, we have to use different method and there are different conditions that we have to use and that condition would apply to known as anti-Markovnikov's rule. And what is anti-Markovnikov's rule? Let us study about that also. So now let us discuss about the anti-Markovnikov's rule. So it states that according to anti markovnikov's rule when an unsymmetrical alkene is reacted with an unsymmetrical reagent then the negative part of the reagent will attach to that carbon in carbon carbon double bond having more number of h atoms in presence of peroxide so the condition is in presence of peroxide in markovnikov's rule what uh, it used to be happened that we didn't use extra uh, reagent or we didn't use additional reagent. We had only used uh, an unsymmetrical alkene as well as an unsymmetrical reagent. And uh, that's the reason because of which we have got a secondary alkyl halide as the most dominant uh, product compared to that of the uh, primary alkyl halide. So why the reaction gives us uh, a secondary alkyl halide in terms of a Markovnikov's rule and in, uh, in terms of the anti Markovnikov uh, rule uh, we are getting basically primary alkyl halide. So let, uh, so, how, so let me give an example of the anti Markovnikov rule first and then we will understand of both the things that why the predominant uh, product is uh, either primary or either second. So let me give you an example of uh, the um, anti markovnikov rule first. So suppose if we have a um, molecule like this one, the same we would take like uh, propene that we have took uh, earlier. So in this case, I'm uh, trying to react it with suppose HBr and uh, this is the HBr that we have to go over here and uh, first to follow basically an uh, anti of rule so therefore we will use a peroxide so therefore this is the peroxide suppose if I have written over here and the reaction will follow in such manner where we could see that the negative part of the reagent and among the HBr this is the uh, HBr is the negative uh, uh, HBr is basically an unsymmetrical reagent in which basically the bromine atom is basically negative partially negative and hydrogen is basically partially positive so according to anti markovnikov rule and in case of we could also see as peroxide is also been involved so therefore the bromine will attach to that carbon carbon double bond as we could see over here these are the carbon carbon double bond that we are concerned about and uh, among this the bromine atom or the one which is more electronegative so in this case we see the more electronegative atom will attach to that carbon carbon double bond atom which uh, which will acquire more hydrogen atoms so that is the reason if we observe here so among this carbon carbon double bond this is the carbon atom which acquires more hydrogen atoms so that is the reason bromine will attach over here while the hydrogen will attach over here making the product to be formed as ch3 CH because of hydrogen has been involved over here, so therefore this will become CH2 and the double bond would break into carbon carbon single bond 
And now, the answer that we could get is, or the product that we could get is, either we will have CH2 along with the bromine. So that is CH2 beer. So this is the product that we have got and this product would be called as a primary alkyl as we could know that the bromine is been attached to that carbon atom which is being attached to only one carbon atom directly. So that's the reason it is called to be a primary alkyl halide. But what would be the name of this one? This would be named as one bromo. And the total number of carbon in this case is basically 3 mol 3 propane in terms of an saturated hydrocarbon. So this is the thing that we have observed over here and what we have to uh, make a concern is why the reaction happens uh, in such a manner where we could get uh, one bromopropane as a major product in, uh, but uh, it is not uh, only this product that we could obtain, we could also obtain uh, a secondary alkyl halide, but that would be basically uh, a minor product. So why this happens with Marco and rule that we get a secondary alkyl halide and uh, why we get the uh, primary alkyl halide in terms of when, uh, when the reaction is following anti marconic rule. So let us discuss about the two separately. So uh, now we are going to discuss about uh, the mechanism uh, where we could see that the electrophilic uh, uh, addition takes place uh, for the marconic rule and uh, a different uh, free radical mechanism that takes place for that is the uh, anti marconic rule. So let us study about that. So now, learning about the mechanism of the electrophilic addition uh, according to the Markov Nuggets rule, let us study about that. So now we are going to learn about the uh, mechanism that takes place in uh, electrophilic addition of uh, that is in Markov Nuggets rule. So in Markov-Lewis rule, we know that we use basically uh, an unsymmetrical reagent and suppose uh, the unsymmetrical reagent is basically the HBr that we have to go here. So suppose this is the HBr that we have to go here. So suppose if this molecule if undergoes an uh, heterolytic fusion and uh, during the heterolytic fusion, we know that the bond division will take place in such a manner that uh, the one of which acquires the more uh, electronegativity or the one which will possess more electronegative uh, will acquire the uh, electrons while the other one will be the more uh, positive. So, as you know, that bromine is more electronegative compared to that of the hydrogen, and hydrogen is basically more electropositive. So, that's the reason um, during the bond fusion of this, that is, uh, we could get H plus ions and Br minus ions. So, this is a cation, and while this is an anion, or we could say a negatively charged species. So this is the species where we could see that uh, because of which uh, the addition reaction would take place. Suppose if the reactant uh, that we have that is an unsymmetrical alkene that we have and that we have put in the both the cases that is the one which has followed Markovnikov and the one which has followed anti Markovnikov rule. So talking about the first one that is we are now going to talk about the Markovnikov rule. Suppose the molecule that we have to go over there was CH3, CH double bond, CH2. And suppose uh, in this case, basically the hydrogen is the one that is being involved. So, suppose if this is the one that is uh, a cation uh, that is being involved, that is H plus, uh, so as to uh, break the bond between the carbon and carbon, so as to form a carbon carbon single bond. So, this kind of addition or uh, this kind of uh, uh, reduction of a double bond to a carbon carbon single bond is basically known as an electrophilic addition. The reason behind that is because of the hydrogen, uh, and hydrogen is positive. And uh, so hydrogen is a positive ion, so therefore it could call it could also be called as basically electrophile. So basically, the electrophilic addition would take place over here, where we could see that the two possibility of the product or uh, two possibility of the uh, carbon cation that we could get. And what are those two possibility? Let me talk about that also. So suppose if uh, the hydrogen would have been attacked over here. That is to this carbon atom. So therefore, what would be the product or what would the uh, species that we would get? So therefore, the species would be CH3 CH single bond CH3, where a positive charge would be acquired for this carbon atom. And while talking, uh, if this hydrogen is attacking over here, so therefore because of the electrophilic uh, uh, addition, so the product that we could get is CH3. CH2, CH2, and now the positive charge will be on this carbon. So these are the two possibilities that we could get, and uh, we know that uh, this could be called as a secondary uh, 
carbocation. Uh, this one could be called as the primary carbocation. As you could see that this carbon atom, uh, which is basically carbocation, uh, which is now being surrounded by two carbon atoms. So making this to be called as a secondary carbocation. And this is the one which is entirely attached to only one carbon atom. Uh, so that's why this is being called as a primary uh, carbocation. So among the two, which one is stable? So among the two, this one is stable. That is the secondary carbocation. So secondary carbocation is more stable compared to that of the uh, primary carbocation. The reason behind that is because of the methyl groups that have been attached over here. We know that the methyl groups are the ones which uh, exhibit the plus side elective effect and that's the reason they will try to uh, donate their electrons or they will try to push their electrons towards this carbon atom and this carbon atom is positively charged. So making uh, uh, this carbon atom which has been positively charged to neutralize and uh, that's the reason it will become more stable. By talking about this carbon atom, this carbon atom is only attached with this uh, only one carbon atom directly and that's the reason this will uh, it will also show a plus I effect, but the thing is, it won't be that much stable and it won't, won't neutralize this positive charge, making uh, the lower one that I have written over here to be less uh, stable. So, therefore, this is the most stable uh, product or the most stable species that we could get. And this is the one that we have to make a consideration. And suppose we have got that is CH3, CH, CH3 plus as the major species that we have got to because of the electrophilization of hydrogen. So in this case, the work of hydrogen has been overlaid because it has been added over here. But what about the Br or the negative reagent? So in this case, the negative reagent that is Br minus, it will attach over this carbon atom which requires positive charge, making the product to be formed as CH3, CH, CH3, and here it is the Br. The so that is the reason that we are always obtaining secondary alkyl halide as the major product. So this was the mechanism that I have uh, showcased for the Markov loop. group. And, uh, but one thing is been remaining that is for anti Markov loop. group. So let me discuss about that also. So now we are discussing about the mechanism uh, in reaction uh, that has been following that is the uh, anti marcolino flow. So what uh, and how the reaction takes place? So in case of anti marcolino flow that we have stated that we use basically peroxide, and in this case peroxide can be a hydrogen peroxide as well as benzoyl peroxide. So the structure of the benzoyl chloride can be written as that is benzoyl peroxide can be written as C six H five C double bond O. So benzoyl peroxide plays a very important role in uh, the contribution to receive or to, to form a product that is of a primary alkyl halide when an uh, unsymmetrical reagent is been treated with an unsymmetrical alkene. So how does the uh, this basically peroxide plays a very important role? Let me talk about that. So the structure of uh, benzoyl peroxide uh, as we know and as we have discussed over here that is it is nothing but as you can see on the screen. So this is the molecule which uh, will undergo homolytic fission and the homolytic fission will take place between this two oxygen as you could see over here. So homolytic fission always leads to the formation of radicals. So in this case basically the radicals are being obtained. So that is C6H5 C double bond O. This is a radical. So another radical is also what we would obtain over here that is I would write over here in this format. So these are the radicals that are being obtained and as we know that radicals are basically more uh, reactive so therefore uh, it won't be stable up till this form it has to form um, a stable product so before uh, forming a stable product what will happen is there will be also a homolytic fusion between uh, c6 si or basically we could say this benzene and this carbon uh, of a carbonyl group that has been attached over here so therefore the homolytic fusion will take place over here and we will get a formation of c6 h5 radical plus CO2. 
So the carbon dioxide has been released and the formation of basically C6H5 or we could say as a benzene radical uh, has been formed. And now this is the one that will play a very important role by abstracting the hydrogen from the HBr. How? Let me give an example of that also. So now we have recently formed that is C6H5 and that would be reacted with uh, that is HBr that is what we have uh, introduced in the unsymmetric alkene that is an unsymmetric reagent that we have used uh, in formation of an alkyl halide. So therefore HBr is the one that would be reacted with C6H5 and uh, again the homolytic fusion would take space over here and C6H5 will take uh, the radical will take away the hydrogen from here so therefore we could get uh, basically C6H6 plus Br radical. Now this radical that has been formed over here that will uh, be uh, introduced with the uh, unsymmetrical alkene. So the unsymmetrical alkene in the example that we have took over here it was basically propene. So therefore CH3, CH double bond CH2. So even uh, because this is a radical mechanism that I am talking about. So uh, in this case basically uh, above the carbon carbon double bond one would be basically an uh, sigma bond while the other one be the pi bond. So the pi bonds are basically weaker bond compared to that of the sigma bond. So therefore they have more chances that is the pi bond have more chances to get breaker. So therefore if it gets break then only the uh, and that also through the homolytic fusion that radical would be formed. So therefore suppose if the radical forms in this manner as we could see over here that is CH3, CH single bond, CH2 and one would be radical for uh, this and one would be radical for this. And for this, that is suppose if the uh, bromine radical it has been reacted. So therefore, in case suppose if bromine radical has been reacted, so there is a possibility of two kind of uh, species or two kind of radicals. Uh, so that would be in this manner, where if bromine suppose it has been attached to uh, this CH two. So therefore the bond will be formed over here. So therefore uh, the species that would be formed is basically CH3, CH and here it would be CH2, Br. But the another possibility is suppose if this bromine uh, gets uh, attached over this carbon atom. So therefore we could get basically uh, that is CH3, CH here it would be suppose Br and here it would be CH2. So if we compare this two, that is uh, the first one and second one, this would be called as the secondary uh, alkyl radical as you could see over here. So because the radical has been attached to, uh, the carbon radical has been attached to two other carbon atoms and making this to be called as a secondary uh, carbon, carbon radical, but this one would be called as the primary carbon radical. And we know uh, that uh, the secondary one is more stable compared to that of the uh, uh, primary one in, in form of radical also. So therefore, uh, and in terms of uh, that we have studied for a carbocation so this would be more stable so that's the reason that if this stable is a uh, stable uh, species is now being reacted with hbr so what will happen let us see so the stable for uh, so the stable radical that has been formed is basically ch3 ch and here it is basically ch2 br so among this, suppose if it has been reacted with uh, HBr, that is the one that we have uh, made through for a reaction and uh, suppose if the reaction will happen and again the homolytic fusion will take place over here and we could see that uh, the formation of basically CH3, CH and among this the hydrogen would be abstracted uh, over here from the HBr, it would be abstracted by this radical and that is the thing that we could get CH3, CH2 and here it is. CH2 PR. So this is the major product that we would get and uh, we could say that the alkyl halide that has been formed is basically primary alkyl halide and, and the name of this is 1-bromo uh, propane. So this is how the mechanism takes place for uh, that is uh, in uh, Markovnikov's rule following a Markovnikov's rule and the one which is following anti Markovnikov's rule. So this is the one of the most uh, important and the crucial thing that we have got to know and this mechanism or this kind of uh, uh, the rule is also applicable to not only for HBr and uh, not only for uh, the uh, hydrogen halide but it is also applicable for the other uh, species like suppose H2O like HOH we could also say it in that manner and uh, 
and different species uh, different reagent which has which are basically unsymmetrical as well as uh, in which uh, they are more polar and having a one um, that is group of atom that is being more electronegative so even that case also even though in addition of uh, uh, for an alkene the mechanism would take place uh, the same in the same manner and that we have saw here so now talking about the mechanism uh, we have talked about the mechanism and let us talk about the reactivity so what would be the reactivity suppose in uh, in the both the cases that is in uh, by reaction that is following anti markovnikov's rule and the reaction that is following markovnikov's rule uh, the thing is we have added an hydrogen halide uh, to an alkene but which hydrogen halide is more reactive so that is the main thing that i am talking about so the uh, hydrogen halide or uh, that is more reactive is basically hr then uh, that is HBr and then HCl. So this is the reactivity of the hydrogen halide that I have talked about. And uh, now let us talk about uh, why in basically peroxide. In, usually in peroxide we use uh, the hydrogen halide as HBr. That is hydrogen bromide. The reason behind that is in uh, talking about the HI and HCl. That is the competition is between this three for peroxide. Talking about uh, HCl, HCl is the one which would require uh, more uh, energy so as to break the bond. So that's the reason uh, it is not very much feasible that uh, that will undergo a peroxide effect and that's the reason uh, HCl is not being used. And talking about HI, HI is, uh, is very easy to breakable and the bond fission or we could say that the bond enthalpy is uh, very much less. But the thing is if the HI bond has been broken then there are been chances of formation of I2 because suppose if this is HI and another HI molecules or and more HI molecules have been present even they will undergo homolytic fission and so there is a chances of formation of uh, I2 molecule. So that's the reason that uh, if I2 molecule has been formed and so how could an uh, alkyl halide be formed. So that is the main thing uh, and during uh, the use of peroxide so that is the reason that hbr is prominently used in uh, the reaction that has been uh, exhibiting or that has been showing uh, anti markovnikov's rule in addition of uh, uh, that is an alkyl halide to an alkene so now let us move on to the next chemical property of alkene that is sulfuration or we could say action of sulfuric acid Action of H2S4 on basically alkene. So what is the reaction that would take a place over there? So let me uh, give you a general reaction first and then we'll move on towards the what would be the uh, reaction for a particular example or for a particular alkene. So again the example would be the similar that we have took over uh, in earlier case that is suppose in this case we have took an example like this one. And if you are introducing uh, this alkene uh, uh, with uh, that is concentrated H2S4, that is what uh, we could write over here as HOSO4. That is, this is how we could write uh, H2S4 in this format. So, what would be the reaction or what would be the product that would be formed over here? It is very similar to that of the Markovnikov's rule. Uh, so how we could say that it is following Markovnikov's rule because as we could see that H2O so suppose if it would be written like this and uh, we know that hydrogen is the one which is partially positive while uh, this whole molecule would be basically or this group of atoms would be basically partially negative. So this one is basically the partially negative uh, group and that would attach to the carbon carbon double bond atom uh, that is or the carbon atom uh, which has less hydrogen atom. So that is the reason that among this that is in the whole H2S4, OSO3H will be the one that will be attached on the carbon atom over here, while the H is the one that would attach over here. So I'm marking this so as it would be very much easy to understand. So the thing that we could obtain here is basically RCH OSO3H, and here the bond would break and this one would be converted into CH3. But the reaction won't stop here because this is a very, very unstable product that would be formed. So we have to uh, make this reaction to form a basically uh, a hydrolysis process. So how the reaction would take place? I would uh, take an, another example or I would uh, just explain it now. That is when R CH CH3 as you could see over here. Suppose if it it has been reacted with water molecule or the one uh, or the reaction which undergoes hydrolysis. So therefore. In this process basically water would be involved and uh, the reaction would take place in such a manner that uh, 
the H which is basically partially positive and uh, the OH minus which is basically partially negative and this H plus will go to the oxygen atom which is basically negative and this one would be basically we know at positive so therefore uh, the reaction uh, will ultimately give us a product like R CH CH3 and here it would be OH plus if OH will uh, will take away that is uh, HSO3 H so as to form H2SO4 so in this process basically what we have got we have got an alcohol and that alcohol is specifically a secondary alcohol so in this case basically anti marco in this case basically marconic of all is being used and uh, that is the reason that we are getting a secondary alcohol so if uh, in presence of peroxide suppose if would we would have been used then we would have got a primary alcohol so this is similarly to that of the one that we have did earlier that is in um, addition of uh, that is the hbr in um, an alkene so let me give an example so this was a general reaction that would lead us to formation of an uh, alcohol so let me give an example like this one i am taking suppose uh, i will take a unsymmetrical alkene because uh, symmetrical alkene will uh, give us a possible product and that would lead to a same product uh, so let me take a that is uh, unsymmetrical alkene suppose this is the reaction uh, uh, that we'll react uh, suppose this is the reactant that we'll uh, introduce with uh, h2so4 that is uh, concentrated h2so4 so the product that we could get is uh, we could write over here as ch3 ch ch3 while this would be converted into basically we could write it as o so3h but the reaction would not stop over here we have to use a hydrolysis process that is the reason that we have to use water in this case and that is the thing we could get ch3 ch ch3 oh plus h2so4 as a byproduct so the name of this is basically propane to all So this is what we have got but have you noticed that um, initially we have used h2so4 and in the final uh, product uh, as a byproduct we also get the same h2so4 that's the reason h2so4 is is like a catalyst that has been used in this case and during for for, for the formation of uh, basically and propanol so we can convert an uh, alkene to an alcohol by using water and basically h2so4 so that is what we have did over here and the rule that has been followed over here is the same that is markovnikov's rule and uh, this is the reaction and so let us move on with the another one that is the next kind of process that is the fifth one that i'm going to talk about that is ozonolysis Ozonolysis is nothing but a reaction uh, uh, where we introduced uh, ozone to an alkene in which uh, a unstable product is been formed as an intermediate that is known as ozonoid and that has been uh, further reacted with uh, zinc uh, or water so as to form an aldehyde or ketone or both. So let me give an example that uh, what is actually ozonolysis by giving a general reaction and then we'll move on with an example. Suppose if we have an alkene like uh, suppose this is the one that we have uh, an alkene a general one and uh, suppose if we are reacting with an one mole of ozone so what will happen is and uh, for that we should need an organic solvent so for that we will have an organic solvent and we know that what are the organic solvents that is uh, it could be benzene uh, that is um, uh, ether or they are basically known as the organic solvents and so what will happen uh, in this case suppose if uh, ozone is being reacted with uh, that is an alkene a formation of an intermediate would be formed that is a very unstable product that would be formed and that is basically known as ozonoid so this would be like this one So this is basically known as ozonoid. But this is not the stable one. So we have to react it with basically zinc in presence of 
H2O. So what will happen is zinc is the one that will remove this oxygen over here as you could see. So it will remove the oxygen and the formation of and again yes what I am want to try to explain is the bond fusion or the bond breaking would take place in such a manner that we could get an aldehyde over here and uh, this one is also an aldehyde this can be aldehyde also this can be ketone also depending on what we have chosen over here so therefore the thing that we could obtain over here is r c h o which is an aldehyde and here it would be formed as an aldehyde so this is an aldehyde but uh, this is also an aldehyde that we have got so and the zinc is the one that will be uh, reacted with uh, or that will take away the oxygen and that's the case that uh, uh, we will get uh, and uh, an aldehyde so this is a process of uh, that is uh, ozonolysis and the thing uh, that we are using in this case is zinc the reason behind that is zinc is the one basically uh, it will uh, it is used as an uh, oxidizing agent and uh, so it is and the zinc is the one which will be used as a reducing agent the reason because the zinc is the one which will form uh, that is which will form zno and during this process suppose if uh, zinc is not been used then this h2 that has been used uh, that will form h2o2 and that would lead to the formation of or that will uh, lead to the reaction with an aldehyde so as to form oxidation of aldehyde that will lead to an formation of an carboxylic acid that is the reason we are using zinc so zinc plays a very vital role in uh, uh, for the reduction of uh, the process so let me give you an example that uh, uh, an example related to ozonolysis Suppose if we have a uh, that is an alkene, so in this case suppose if I am taking the alkene in such a way uh, which can be symmetrical also which could be basically unsymmetrical. So first of all let me talk about an uh, symmetrical alkene and but the thing is uh, the both the reaction of uh, the both the alkene will give different kind of products. So therefore what I am trying to say is So this is a symmetrical alkene that we have and uh, we have to basically uh, do a such uh, ozonolysis process where we could use ozone as well as we have to use zinc and in this case we will get an ozonide and so let us start with that. So we are reacting with ozone that is O3. So the product that would be formed I have read over here by using an organic solvent. So the product that would be formed over here, it would be CH3, CH and here would be again CH, CH3 while we could see that this oxygen will form an ozonoid. So this is an ozonoid that we have formed. But as we have discussed that this is not a stable product that we would get so again this would be uh, reacted with uh, zinc and it will undergo hydrolysis process so i will write the structure i don't have a space over here so as to write so i will write the structure again so as to make uh, a hydrolysis process But the hydrolysis will uh, take place in presence of zinc. So in fact, in this case, we can use uh, H2O, but the H2O solely used would not be uh, very useful. The thing is that we have to use zinc. And that is the thing that zinc will uh, uh, get, uh, or it will, uh, like it will, uh, so that is the thing that zinc will be the one that will be removing this uh, oxygen. And that is the reason that we could get uh, in hydrolysis process where we could see that the bond fusion would take place like this one and uh, we could get that is CH3 CH double bond O and here also we could get the same thing that is CH3 CH double bond O making to be this called as an aldehyde and this aldehyde is specifically known as ethanol so this is the thing that we have uh, got formed and uh, because of the zinc that we have used because uh, if we don't use zinc then the formation of h2 2 takes 
uh, can take space and that would uh, lead to the oxidation of ethanol that would be uh, eventually forming uh, acetic acid or we could call it as ethanoic acid so zinc plays a very vital role in formation of an ethanol so this was in basically in a uh, symmetrical uh, alkene uh, that we have took and uh, let us talk about an unsymmetrical alkene in this way suppose if we have uh, the uh, alkene like this one so the name of this alkene can be uh, easily can be detected and we know that according to the IUPC rule also we could say that the name of this is basically 2 methyl uh, but 2 ene so suppose if this is been reacted with an ozone and that also in presence of an organic solvent so the thing that we could get is we could get an ozonide so the ozonide would be CH3 CH here it would be CH3 and here it would be CH3 and formation of an ozonide as we could see over here. So this is the thing that we have got to uh, uh, that we have formed and uh, the reaction won't be stopped over here because this is an ozonide that has been formed and that is basically uh, unstable. So for that what we have to do is we have to uh, make the reaction to undergo hydrolysis process in presence of zinc. So zinc is the one which plays a very vital role in this case by removing this oxygen and uh, that is the thing we could get uh, the product as this as a product forming an aldehyde and this as a product forming a ketone so therefore the products are basically CH3 CH double bond O plus that is CH3 C double bond O and this is CH3. So therefore this is a ketone while this is an aldehyde that we have got and zinc will remove uh, the oxygen. So this is how we could uh, make uh, a reaction uh, with ozone uh, and an uh, alkene so as to form an aldehyde or a ketone or both. So this was uh, nothing but ozonolysis. So let us move on to the next one. So the next kind of chemical property that we are going to see uh, or uh, the next kind of uh, preparation of the other chemical uh, from alkene is basically known as oxidation. So the reaction that can be shown by the uh, alkenes are also oxidation and yes oxidation uh, is the reaction in which we could convert a basically an alkene uh, to a carboxylic acid or we could convert an alkene to an alcohol. So depending on that there are two different conditions that we are going to use and using an um, that is oxidizing agent named as um, that is given a 4 or we could call it as potassium permanganate. So let us talk about that. So starting with the first one that I am going to explain about uh, the general uh, reaction of an alkene. So, so this is an alkene and for which we have to uh, make it uh, in um, that is an oxidation process and even they are there are two kind of oxidation processes one that would take place in an acidic medium and one that would take place in basic medium so let's first of all talk about the basic medium first so this is an alkene that we have and suppose uh, if we have uh, introduced that is uh, KMnO4 and KMnO4 is uh, known to be basically an oxidizing agent and because of which basically we could find more nascent uh, that is oxygen atoms and uh, that would be reacted with basically H2O and this KMnO4 would be in a basic medium so we could also write it as alkaline medium so that is alkaline KMnO4 is what we are going to use uh, in presence of water and uh, that would be reacted with basically uh, alkene so what is the reaction that would take place the reaction that takes place will make an diol or we could introduce an alcoholic OH group and this OH group is basically known as hydroxyl group and that's the reason the overall process can also be uh, said as a hydroxylation process. So in this process basically what happens is, as you could see over here that is H2O is been used, that is water is been used and because of the nascent uh, oxygen that has been produced because of the uh, alkaline KMnO4 uh, and that, that is the reason that uh, the overall product that would be obtained in this case would be this known to be as and diode. 
so this is the vicinal dialog that uh, we are observing here because the both the the OH groups are being uh, arranged uh, to the adjacent carbon atoms that we could see. So let me give an example of this and so as we could understand it better that what would be the reaction or what would be the oxidation process uh, in presence of basically alkali in KMnO4. So let me give you an example. Bute 2 in and that undergoes basically an oxidation reaction in presence of that is alkaline KMnO4 or potassium permanganate and uh, in that case also we know that uh, nesken oxygen has been produced and uh, the water is being used in that case so obviously it will form a diol so the uh, product that would be formed over here is basically we could write over here as CH here it would be OH and here we CH OH and here it is CH3. So this is the vicinal dialog and uh, the name of this uh, alkene especially for this one is basically as we could see that uh, on carbon number 2 and carbon number 3 we could find OH or the hydroxyl group so therefore the name of this would end with diol that is two uh, uh, groups of the alcoholic group or two uh, OH group or we also call it as, as a hydroxyl group. So therefore the name of this would be since four carbon atoms have been present over here so therefore the name of this would be but butane and on the second and the third position basically alcohol group is been present so therefore 2 comma 3 diol so this is uh, the uh, preparation of diol from an alkene we could also say in that manner but this was an uh, condition that we have used uh, in uh, alkaline uh, KMnO4 and what would be the uh, condition uh, and what would the product if we use basically an acidic condition that is a uh, acidic KMnO4 so let us talk about that so this is uh, what we have done with uh, that is uh, uh, the alkaline medium so let us talk with for the acidic medium so again for an acidic medium we have to introduce an alkene uh, and uh, we have to react it with uh, basically uh, alkaline KMnO4 so that is uh, acidic KMnO4 so suppose I am just writing uh, the reaction and uh, you will understand that what will happen in this case. So I am not writing the general reaction. We could take an example like this one as I have uh, took over here. So this is the reaction that I am. Uh, suppose this is the uh, alkene that we have and uh, for this we have to make a uh, reaction in acidic that is KMnO4. So I would write over here. So basically, KMnO4 is an oxidizing agent, and that's the reason that we could have an uh, uh, nascent oxygen that would be available. So in this case, the nascent oxygen that would be available is four moles that would be uh, uh, used in this overall reaction. So in this case, uh, what we could get, we could get a basically uh, an uh, reaction where we could get carbon dioxide and the reason behind that is if we could observe over here that uh, there are four oxygen atoms that are been involved so among the four oxygen one oxygen would be uh, replacing this CH2 making the product to be that is CH3 CH double bond O that is nothing but an halide uh, aldehyde and talking about the carbon carbon will uh, now three oxygens are being remaining and of uh, this three oxygen that is the uh, two oxygen will be involved with this carbon atom so as to form basically carbon dioxide so the one hydrogen that has been remained that would take away this two uh, hydrogen uh, atoms so as to form basically h2o so in this condition what we have observed is uh, if we have used acidic medium then the product that we could get in this case is basically that is uh, an aldehyde with the formation of carbon dioxide and H2O but in the previous uh, one that we have used that is an alkaline medium of KMnO4 in that what we have got we have got uh, that is an diol so now suppose if we have another uh, that is uh, alkene and uh, that is of uh, in this manner if we could write and even that is been reacted with the acidic KMnO4 uh, solution so let us see for that that is CH3 CH double bond CH CH3 basically this is but 2 in and uh, if this is the one that is uh, uh, reacting in presence of uh, KMnO4 and that would be an acidic medium or acidic condition of uh, KMnO4 so in this case basically the four nascent 
uh, oxygen atom would be produced and that would be involved in the uh, reaction with the, the but 2 in so in this process what would happen is uh, the formation of uh, acetic acid would take place that is uh, I would write over here like CH3 C double bond O OH plus so this is the reaction that took place on this two carbon atoms while the other two carbon atoms would also be oxidized to form that is CH3 CH or we could write it like C double bond O OH so this is basically acetic acid that has been produced or we could call it as ethanoic acid so these are the two basic uh, reactions that uh, have uh, took place and the two reactions are basically different when we uh, talk the oxidation of an alkene in terms of an um, acidic condition or in terms of an basic condition so this were the two uh, one and uh, let us talk with the the last one that we have and uh, that is uh, some quite different and that is basically a property which i have not discussed and that is basically polymerization yes Even polymerization is a property that has been exhibited or that could be shown by basically an alkenes. So what is actually polymerization? Polymerization is nothing but uh, the uh, conversion of a small monomers or small unit of a uh, molecule to form a larger unit of uh, a molecule which consists of higher molecular mass. For example, let me explain you. If ethene undergoes polymerization, it will form polyethene. So this is a process where uh, more uh, where number of moles of the ethenes are been involved so as to form a larger uh, compound uh, having a higher molecular mass and that is the reason the uh, reaction of the process is been called as polymerization so let me give you an example to understand that is what is polymerization so for that alkenes are the one which can show polymerization process because uh, we know that uh, uh, among the carbon carbon double bond that we have uh, in alkenes and one of the carbon carbon bond would be a sigma bond while one of them would be in uh, that is a, a pi bond and the pi bond is very weak bond so that's why it is very easy uh, for us to break that bond and the polymerization uh, took place in such a manner where we have to use n number of ethene suppose in this case we have uh, used an example as ethene so therefore we can use n number of ethenes and yes we have to uh, uh, provide particular heat that is basically we could say it as 483 kelvin and we have to apply more pressure a high pressure of basically 1500 atmosphere so this kind of polymerization that takes place or uh, the process where now ethene n number of uh, ethene molecules which are basically uh, the micro molecules or we could say as monomers now because in certain conditions that is at 483 kelvin and 1500 atmosphere they try to combine with each other so as to form a larger molecule and uh, in that case in that case what happens is the uh, double bond breaks and that's the reason we could see that all the compounds that we have got that is the whole uh, the larger group that we have got a macro molecule that consists of carbon carbon single bond and that's the reason that uh, because of the bond gets break then one of the molecule combines with the another uh, macro molecule or another monomer so as to form uh, a large molecule so in this case we could represent it in this way that is ch2 single bond ch2 and then also it this unit this is called to be monomer and this whole is said to be a polymer and since this polymer is made up of ethene so therefore the name of this would be polyethene or polythene so this is a polymer that we have got so suppose if we have uh, took propene then the uh, product or uh, then the polymer that we have uh, got is basically known as uh, polypropene so it goes on and uh, that's the reason that uh, uh, alkenes are basically are the one that undergoes polymerization process but alkenes don't undergo polymerization process because of uh, the absence of the carbon carbon double bond in them and that is especially the pi bond so that's what this play uh, this doesn't require any kind of uh, much more critical condition uh, because compared to that of the alkane because alkane don't have itself uh, uh, carbon carbon double bond and that's the reason uh, alkenes are very easy to undergo polymerization process uh, and uh, this is the property that we have got to know so in all the that is chemical property or in all the methods of different uh, that is chemicals from ethene we have studied and uh, from that we have got to know the reactions of uh, the alkene and they were basically 
hydrogenation, halogenation, hydrohalogenation, hydroxylation, ozonolysis, and so on. So even this was among the chemical property of alkene. So this is what we have did, but uh, we will conclude it with uh, taking few questions and let us see that uh, uh, how can we derive that particular product if the question is being provided to us. So let us check that also. So suppose if the question is being provided to us in this way, that is, how acetylene is converted into ethylene glycol. So that is the thing that we have to uh, do a process so as to showcase uh, the conversion of ethylene to uh, that is ethylene glycol. But before understanding what is acetylene, acetylene is nothing but ethyne. So this is the common name of ethyne and ethyne we know can be written as in this way that is I would name it as uh, ethyne, acetylene can also be called as ethyne and uh, that is now should be converted to ethylene glycol but ethylene glycol is basically uh, a, a diol, diol in the sense this is what we have studied that is uh, conversion of an alkene to a diol by using of uh, basically uh, oxidizing agent like k 4 and that also in alkaline medium but this is not uh, alkene this is alkyne so the first thing that we have to do is we have to convert this alkyne to alkene but for that we can use hydrogenation process but in that case we cannot use Renin nickel. The reason behind that is if we use renin nickel then this whole uh, that is carbon carbon triple bond that we have between the carbon and carbon as you could see now that will be converted into saturated hydrocarbon that is alkane and we don't want an alkane we need alkene so for that we need a special kind of catalyst basically known as Lindlock's catalyst and that catalyst will uh, will not uh, uh, make the hydrogen process to go up till uh, the alkane it will stop the reaction uh, till alkene so that is the reason now we are converting ethyne to ethene so let us convert that So this will happen in presence of basically palladium and CaCO3 and is in presence of that is lead acetate and we have to do the hydrogenation process so therefore we are using H2. So once we have got this one or once we have got to understand that what we should use in catalyst or as a reagent so it would be very better for us to predict that uh, how we can make the reactant to a product so now this would be giving us because one of the hydrogen will go over here while one of the hydrogen will go over here breaking the carbon carbon triple bond to carbon carbon double bond so therefore we would get ch2 double bond ch2 which is nothing but ethene but this is not the work done or we, we cannot say the work has been done completely because we want uh, ethylene glycol so for that what we have to do yes we have to convert this ethene to ethylene glycol how can we do that it is very simple so this is what we have did earlier also that is uh, we will involve that is uh, ethene with Alkaline K4 and uh, that alkaline K4 will have a basically nascent oxygen and we have to make the reaction uh, in a in a such a manner that uh, even water is being involved in that case. So therefore overall whenever the oxidation takes place for an alkene and that also in alkaline medium like uh, alkaline K4 then obviously we will get a diol. So in this case the diol that we are getting is among this two hydrogen atoms and this two oxygen atoms that we have so this uh, hydroxyl that is OH group will attach over here and it will and another OH will attach over here so therefore this process is known as basically hydroxylation process and uh, so that is the reason we could write it as CH2 single bond CH2 OH OH so this is the product of us and uh, that was been provided to us and we have to we have also predicted that how can we convert that uh, reactant to uh, this product and this is basically known as ethylene glycol but 
when it comes to the ipc naming so the ipc naming it's very much simple to understand because this is the first carbon this would be called as the second carbon and uh, the both the carbons because the both the carbons are attached uh, together and therefore it could be called as ethene in terms of an alkene but this is not um, an alkene this is the derivative of alkene in which oh group has been substituted uh, um, to the hydrogen atoms that were been present in an alkene so now this oh group uh, are basically the alkali group so therefore the name of this would be ethane 1 comma 2 diol so this is the ipc name that what we have did so now let us move on to the next one so this is the question that we have and we have to uh, apply that what we have studied in the reaction of alkene and on that basis we are going to easily predict that how can we uh, derive this product from the given reactant or from a given question that has been given to us so now let us understand this that is we have to write the structure of an aldehyde uh, that are obtained on oxidases of but1 in and but2 in so now we have to basically predict the aldehyde by uh, one alkene is been given to us that is for for one case it has been given as but1 in and for other one it is given as but2 in so we are going to solve it uh, separately and do uh, the ozonolysis process on that and let us see what is the product that we could get so this is the thing that we have did in ozonolysis also but let us uh, uh, be make us sure that uh, we how to write this kind of uh, uh, reactions so starting with the first one that is i write over here as ozonolysis So let us understand that what is the structure of butuanine. So this is the thing that we have did in our earlier lecture also that is in the uh, structural formula for an IPC names of alkene. So it would be very much easy to uh, make the structure of that and uh, for that let me recap that. That is uh, for butene when we have to write then the four carbon atoms should be present in a straight chain and the carbon carbon double bond is present at carbon number one and carbon number two. So either I could take the carbon number one as this one, second, third and fourth. So the carbon carbon double bond is between carbon number one or it starts from carbon number one and that is the reason we could see as carbon carbon double bond here and the next thing is we have to fulfill the hydrogen uh, and we could say that we should fulfill the valency of carbon atom so therefore this could be written as CH2 this would be CH even here it would be CH2 while here it would be CH3 and this is basically but one in that we have and for this we have to basically do ozonolysis process so ozonolysis process is the one that takes place in presence of ozone so this is what we are going to write over here O3 and a kind of solvent is been needed uh, so as to uh, conclude a particular product so that is basically organic solvents are basically used in this case so I would write over here as organic solvent but we know that when uh, an ozone is been reacted to an alkene so ozonite is been formed so therefore this ozone will attack only that carbon carbon double bond it will have no influence on the carbon carbon single bond uh, that you could see over here so it will only attack the carbon carbon double bond and will make an ozonite structure so therefore uh, let me make the ozonite structure over here and uh, let, let me explain you so therefore this structure would be like this one that is ch3 ch2 ch i would write over here as ch2 and the ozonite structure that i could write over here like this one so this is the thing that we have did so this could be called as ozonoid but this is not a stable product it has to undergo hydrolysis process that is in presence of zinc so what we have to do is we have to react it with that is zinc and basically water or we are doing hydrolysis so in this process what will happen is this bond that we could see over here it will break and even this would break and the zinc will be successful to uh, remove this oxygen and uh, that is the thing that we could observe that we could observe two aldehydes as you could see over here that is this is ch3 ch2 ch double bond o so therefore this could be written as this one as i have wrote over here so this is an aldehyde that we have got but another aldehyde is also remaining so that is the other part so that is i could write over here as ch2o or that could be uh, in terms of uh, to not get confused i could write over here also so making this group to be called as aldehyde even this is aldehyde so these are the two aldehydes that we have got and yes even uh, 
the zinc oxide is also been uh, removed as a byproduct so this is what we have so these are the products that we are obtained when the uh, ozonosis of butene or but one in occurs and uh, the aldehydes that are been produced in this case so even the name is what we have to write or mention over here so the total number of carbon in this aldehyde is basically three so making this to be called as uh, basically propane so therefore but this is not propane but propane is the one that is in terms of an alkane so therefore the total number of carbon in this case is three making this to be called as propanal because it is an aldehyde also so therefore the name of this is propanal while the name of this aldehyde because it consists of only one carbon atom so therefore it could be called as methanol or in terms of uh, a common name this would be called as formaldehyde so these are the two aldehydes that is propanol and uh, methanol that is uh, what we obtained when we do ozonolysis of uh, but one e so now let us uh, go with the another one that we had that is the another question that we have that is what will happen if we do the ozonolysis for but 2 e so let us understand that also so now we are going to start with the ozonolysis of but 2 e So now we are going to start with the ozonolysis of but 2 in but what is the structure of but 2 in so that is what is the main concern so therefore we could write it over here like ch3 ch double bond ch ch3 so this is the structure of but 2 in and for this we have to apply the ozonolysis process but the ozone uh, can be only reacted with uh, alkene if we provide a particular solvent and that solvent is basically organic solvent so in this case the product that would be obtained is I would write over here like CH3 CH here also it would be CH and here it is CH3 so the ozone that is it will form ozonoid over here like this as I have mentioned over here right so this would be called as ozonoid and that would undergo basically hydrolysis process in presence of zinc so therefore I could write over here like ZN in presence of H2O. Then, because of the hydrolysis, what will happen is this bond will break over here, and this bond will break over here, as we could see over here. And the zinc would be very successful to take over the that is oxygen with it. So, therefore, forming ZNO as a byproduct. And the remaining product that has been uh, that is with us right now is basically CH3, CH double bond O, plus again CH3, CH double bond O. So, we could write it in this form. plus ZNO. So this is what we have got. We have got two aldehydes and the, both the aldehydes are basically the same. The reason behind that is we have used a symmetrical alkene and that's the reason we have got the same uh, aldehyde or the same product. So the name of this aldehyde is been called as because it consists of two carbon atoms and this two carbon atoms in terms of an aldehyde are basically known as ethanol. So therefore this is ethanol that we have got or we could also say it in terms of uh, the common name that is acetal aldehyde. So this is the product that we have got. So this was only possible that uh, uh, if we have did an ozonesis process and yes the both the, the ozonesis process for but1 in and but2 in that is for both the alkenes are different. Well the mechanism would be the same but the thing is the product would be the different and that is the reason that we get so that makes us to understand that both the alkenes are different and hence they can give different products that is the reason that IUPAC is very important for us to understand because if we have an error uh, or if we do some kind of mistake in IUPAC structure or in kind of uh, that is uh, IUPAC naming then the whole process would be basically be mistaken so that is the thing that we have got to know here also so now let us move on to the next question that we have and uh, let us see uh, what we can apply on that so this is the question that we have and what we have to do is uh, that is but one in and two methyl group in that is are separated so, uh, separately treated with the following reagents these are the following reagents uh, to which they will be reacted and we have to predict the products and as well as we have to indicate that which one would be the major product as well as which one would be the minor product so basically this there are again uh, in, in the previous uh, question also there were two uh, 
that is reactors that is butonin and but uh, 2e so similarly here also we have to uh, but we have to make reactions uh, with this following reagents to separately for but 1e and 2 methyl prop e so now let us understand that how can we write for that is but 1e how the reaction would uh, occur when but 1 is been reacted with uh, this following uh, reagents so let us do that so now let us do that so the starting one is for but 1 in the first agent that has been used uh, that is uh, we could say it as reaction with which has been provided to us as hbr so therefore we could write it here reaction with hbr and let us see what is the product that we could get so the first thing is uh, but 2e we have to write the structure of but 2e so it is uh, this is what we have did in the early question that is ch3 ch2 here it would be ch double bond ch2 suppose if, if this is reacted with the uh, hbr but one thing i hope you have got to know that uh, this is the one which is uh, known as uh, hydrohalogenation process that is fine but uh, talking about the alkene the alkene is basically an unsymmetrical alkene and the reagent that we are using again it is also an unsymmetrical reagent so we are basically following markovnikov's rule yes and there is no kind of peroxide has been provided to us in the first question that is we have to react it with only hbr with but 1e so that is the reason no peroxide has been there so we could easily say that it is not following it, it won't follow any markovnikov rule it will follow only markovnikov rule so now let us understand this thing that what would be the product and what would be the possible product that we could get so talking about the first electronegativity is because in markovnikov rule it is mainly concerned with the electronegative uh, or the negatively charged atom that attach on that carbon carbon double bond atom which consists of less number of hydrogen atom so among this hbr we know that uh, hbr in that is h consists of po uh, partially positive charge and br consists of partially negative charge and talking about this carbon atom or this carbon carbon double bond atom this is the carbon atom which consists of only one hydrogen atom while this is the carbon atom that consists of two hydrogen atoms so making the br to be attacked majorly that is the major product that would be formed it would be where br would be attacked on the carbon which is of less quantity and simultaneously we could say that uh, the hydrogen will attack on the ch2 which has more number of hydrogen in terms of carbon carbon double bond and uh, the product that we could get the major product that we could get uh, is this one as i'm writing over here like ch3 ch2 here it is ch but even br gets attached over here so i would write over here as br and this would be ch3 so this is the possible product and this is the major product that we could get so therefore i would write over here as major major product while the minor product minor product is the one which has a, a less possibility or which we could see that uh, less quantity of the product has been obtained so this is the major quantity that we could obtain and talking about the minor one uh, it would follow basically uh, anti markovnikov rule so therefore uh, the product of that would be it could be written in this way that is uh, ch3 it would be primary alco uh, primary alkyl so ch3 ch2 ch2 and uh, again ch2 and this would be br so therefore this would be basically the minor product so talking about so we have differentiated that which one would be major and which one would be the minor and but 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 talking about the next thing is the iupac nomenclature yes we have to also mention the iupac nomenclature of the reactant also as well as the product also we know that for the reactant it is being used as but 1e but for the product it is uh, the product that have been formed in this case is basically it is known as 2 bromo butane the reason behind that is the numbering will start from that end where we could get bromine uh, a less number so therefore we could uh, make the name as to be called as basically 2 bromo butane 
so that is the major product that is two bromo butane is the major product that we could get and talking about this one this is the one which is basically primary alkyl halide and this is a one which will form a minor product and the name of this will be one bromo butane so this is the thing that we have did when uh, but one is was reacted with uh, hbr but the work is not done yet because we have to uh, make the reaction with the other three also so let us do that so the next reaction is for again but one in and we have to react it with uh, basically hbr and na2o2 So this is what we have and uh, we have to react it with but one in so the structure of but one is very simple that we have did earlier also and many times so we could write over here as ch3 ch2 ch double bond ch2 and that is what we have to react it with hbr so i would write over here like hbr but the reaction doesn't take place in normal condition we have to use basically peroxide and in this case the peroxide is basically and it would so since peroxide has been used and we know that the alkene that has been provided to us uh, uh, is an unsymmetrical alkene and so as the reagent is also an unsymmetrical reagent and that is the reason uh, because of the peroxide that has been involved in this case makes us to understand that the reaction would follow basically anti marconi of rule where uh, uh, the bromine will attach to that carbon carbon double bond atom which consists of more number of hydrogen atom so that is the thing where we could see that the bromine which is partially negative and uh, obviously hydrogen which will be partially positive and in this suppose it is following the uh, anti marconi cross rule then the bromine will attack that carbon atom which will consist of more number of hydrogen atoms so simultaneously hydrogen will attach on this carbon atom which consists of less number of, hyd of hydrogen atom so in this case what would be the major product obviously because it is following the anti marconi cross rule the uh, major product would be formed uh, in that manner which has followed the anti marconi cross rule and that is the reason that we could get uh, the primary alkyl halide here as a major product so in this case what we could get is ch3 ch2 so that is the thing that i am writing over here and this ch will be attacked by this hydrogen atom so as to make uh, ch2 and this ch2 will be joined with this br atom so therefore this would be ch2 br so this is the major product that we could get uh, so i would write over here as a major product while the minor product would be because this is a primary alkyl halide which is the one which is uh, following the anti marconi cross rule and that is the reason that we have got one bromo butane in this case as a major product while the minor product would be that is ch3 ch2 ch br and here it would be ch3 so therefore this would be we see the minor product so the name of the major product is known as one bromo butane the reason we have that is because only uh, four carbon atoms are there and uh, we know that the bromine is attached to the first carbon atom uh, in terms of the ipc nomenclature rule so therefore it would be called as one bromo butane while this one would be called as basically two bromo butane so i have noticed that in the previous question that uh, they have asked us to again uh, that is uh, react with hbr but the condition was different there was no kind of presence of peroxide but uh, this uh, has a presence of peroxide making uh, the major product to be different than compared to that of the previous one but talking about this uh, anti marconi cross rule anti marconi cross rule is also known as basically kerash effect yes it is also known as kerash effect as well as because h2o2 or basically peroxide or any kind of peroxide is been used there for this kind of effect or this kind of uh, uh, product that we could get is because of Uh, the effect known as peroxide effect so therefore these are the few terms that are been related to anti marconi cross rule so that is what i wanted to mention about that but uh, let us move on with the further thing the further part is we have to react with hcl in presence of h2o2 so it is very simple to understand because uh, in this case also hbr was been reacted with a peroxide that is na2o2 and now uh, that is hcl is been reacted with h2o2 which is itself a peroxide and only the thing is that would change is instead of an alkyl bromide we would get an alkyl chloride so let me represent that also and let us move on with the further thing so that's what uh, what we have got is when we are reacting in, that is we are going to do a reaction with 
HCl in presence of that is H2O2 or peroxide. Usually what happens is usually we don't take uh, a peroxide as that is hydrogen peroxide. The reason why that is uh, it doesn't give us a, uh, a it doesn't assure us to give a basically a proper product because that's the reason we are using a stable uh, that is uh, uh, peroxide that is benzoyl peroxide and the mechanism that we have did in uh, our previous lectures of the, uh, in this lecture that is uh, we have also did the mechanism for the peroxide effect or we could say it for anti marconic of rule so in that case we have used the benzoyl peroxide so let us understand this one also so the question is uh, the same that is we have to react it with one butene and uh, uh, with, that is HCl in presence of peroxide that is H2O2. So now let us understand. So it would be very much clear uh, to you that how can you write uh, this kind of questions. So I am writing it over directly over here. So and even that also this HCl would be reacted with uh, but 1E and in presence of H2O2 so as to form the major product as CH a primary alkyl here that is CH3 CH2 I would write over here as CH2 here it would be CH2 and here it is Cl. Again the reason would be the same thing that we have did earlier. The Cl which is a, a more negative or the negative part of the reagent will attack that carbon-carbon double bond which consists of more number of hydrogen atom. So therefore this is the one that would happen over here. And we will get this as to be major product. So I would write over here as major. But the minor product would be a secondary alkyl halide, so therefore this could be written as CH3, CH2, and here it would be CH, Cl, and here it is CH3, making this to be called as a minor product. But the name of this one would be basically 1 chlorobutane, but the name of this one would be 2 chlorobutane. I hope you have understood that how to write the IUPAC nomenclature that we have did in our previous lecture. So now this is the third part that we have did, and uh, let us move on with the fourth part, and that is that is reaction with H2O4 and we have to do a hydrolysis process that is the reason that they have mentioned H2. So let us do that also. So now the fourth part is we have to react it with uh, or we could say reaction with sulfuric acid. So how can we write that? Again the same butane we would take that is CH3, CH2, CH double bond CH2. And we will react it first with uh, that is uh, H2SO4. So let me give that also that uh, we could write in HOSO3H. We could write in this format also. So now, uh, as we could see, that there is carbon carbon double bond over here, as you could see, and uh, which is basically an unsymmetrical molecule, uh, unsymmetrical alkene. And uh, it is also been reacted with an unsymmetrical reagent here. How? Because as you could see that we could also write uh, or we could also represent the H2O4 in this form. So this one would be the hydrogen that consists of partially positive charge and the whole group that is attached over here, it will be partially negative charge. And it is the same rule that we are going to apply with the Marconi rule. The reason behind that is we are following Marconi rule because there is no peroxide that has been involved in this case. So therefore it will follow only Marconi rule and the negative part of the region will attack that carbon-carbon double bonds, carbon atom which consists of less number of hydrogen atom. So that is the reason that this whole group that is this whole group will attach over here and this hydrogen will simultaneously attack over here. So now the product that we could obtain is basically this one that is CH3 ch2 ch now this ch will be attacked by oso3h so therefore this is oso3h that i have mentioned over here while this ch2 will be converted to ch3 and the bond would be breaker into single bond so therefore this is ch3 but the work is not done yet because yes we have only involved h2so4 in the reaction we didn't have involved h2o in the reaction so now we are going to involve h2o in the reaction that is uh, commonly known as hydrolysis of the process of the reaction that is uh, so we could write it as hoh and uh, even because of hydrolysis what will happen is even this is the negative part as you know and this is the positive part and oxygen is electronegative while talking about this one would be partially positive so therefore the hydrogen is the one that would attach over here and this o SO3H will take away this OH. So as to form an alcohol that is CH3, CH2, CH, CH3 and in the lower part we could say as a branching uh, that is OH group will be there. So this is the product that we have obtained, the major product that we have obtained and that is one which follows Markovnikov rule and uh, the product name is basically we could say it as a uh, Butane to all. 
so the butane dual is the one which is a forming a major product while the minor product would be that is butane one or that is a primary alcohol and even here in this case basically h2so4 is being retained so therefore we could say that the h2so4 is basically acting as a catalyst so as to convert the alkene to an alcohol so this is the reaction that we have did and yes we have understood uh, that uh, basically this is the major product that we have got so and the minor product will be the that is uh, a primary alcohol so now uh, this is the work that has been done for that is but the second reaction is also been remaining that is for uh, two methyl propene so let us do all the kind of uh, reaction that we have uh, uh, applied on uh, but one in and now we, we are going to same apply that reagents to two methyl propene so now So now we are going to react with the uh, 2-methyl propene starting with the first reagent that they have provided to us and uh, that is nothing but HBr. That is the reaction with HBr. So now the thing is we will write the structure of 2-methyl propene first that uh, how can we write that? It is very easy to understand. That is the parent name of this is basically propene. So therefore that will consist of a 3 uh, carbon atoms that will be connected in a straight chain and that will be considered to be the parent chain. So therefore I have written over here in this format. But the methyl is the one which is attached on the second position of the propane, suppose. So therefore, this could be written as the methyl group that is being attached over here. But this is not propane, this is actually propane. So it is as, as you could see that this is symmetrical and uh, no kind of uh, position of the double bond is been required so as to call it as propane. The reason behind that is we could write it the double bond anywhere. And yes, we have got it. So this is the thing that we have got for 2-methylpropene, but uh, we have to fill, fill the hydrogen valency or the carbon valency also by the hydrogen. So therefore, this would be the CH2, while this one would be CH3. So this is 2-methylpropene, uh, and we have to react it with HBr. So this is the HBr that we have wrote over here. So this is the HBr that we have wrote over here, and the thing is. Uh, Obviously, an addition process, uh, an addition reaction will take place over here, and uh, we know that uh, among HBr, that is Br, is the one which is consists of partially negative charge, while the hydrogen which consists of partially positive charge. While this one will attack only the carbon-carbon double bond because this is a kind of addition reaction. But uh, this is the carbon-carbon double bond that we could observe, and this carbon atom that I have written over here, this doesn't consist of hydrogen atom. So making this carbon to have basically less hydrogen atom or no hydrogen atom. So therefore the negative part of the reagent that is we have to go over here. So now it will attack that carbon atom which consists of less number of hydrogen atom or no hydrogen atom. So therefore we could see that this Br would attack on this carbon atom while this hydrogen will attack on this CH2. So this is an addition kind of reaction and the, that is the reason that no kind of byproduct would be obtained and only the only one product would be obtained but the possibilities are different yes uh, either one we would get a major product while the other one would be a minor product so therefore suppose if i would write the reaction and uh, the possible products i would write like this form so one of the uh, major product that uh, it could be formed where br is the one which is attacking on the carbon atom over here as you would see and this hydrogen atom is been attached to the ch2 so making the product to be formed as ch3 ch3 here and here it would be Br that is bromine atom and this would be converted to CH3. So this is the major product that we could get. But uh, what would be the minor product? I would write over here as a major product. And what would be the minor product? Yes, uh, the minor product will be followed by the anti marconic of rule. So uh, in this case, the hydrogen is the one that will attach over there, while uh, the bromine will attach over here. So making the product to be called, to be uh, having a structure like ch3 c ch3 and here as uh, the hydrogen uh, has been will attack over here when it follows active marketing of rule so therefore this would be written as ch and here it would be ch2 that is br so this is a uh, minor product that we have obtained and uh, differentiating between this two, we could know that uh, this is the one which is basically tertiary alkyl halide, while this one is again the primary alkyl halide. And primary alkyl halides are obtained uh, during the hydrohalogenation process when anti-marconic of rule is being uh, obeyed and when peroxide is being used as a 
and in that case that would be the major product and but in this case because no peroxide was been used so therefore this is the major product and the name of this would be basically as you could see that uh, this is the one which consists of a uh, continuous long chain of carbon atom and uh, on the second position as you could see that methyl group is even present so therefore the name of this would be called as 2 methyl uh, 2 bromo propane or else we could say in alphabetical order 2 bromo 2 methyl propane is the uh, correct IUPC name for this one uh, the major product and talk okay, about this minor product then minor product would have been the name because we could name it as uh, carbon number one two three and on the second position we could see that uh, methyl group is been present and on the first position bromo group, group is been present or bromo bromine atom is been present so therefore the name of this would be one bromo two methyl propane so this is the minor uh, product that we have got so this is the reaction that we have did for uh, that is two methyl propane and hbr so now let us move on to the next one that we have to do that is We have to react or we have to make a reaction of uh, that is uh, 2 methyl propene with uh, that is HPR in presence of Na2O2. So I'll uh, talk about the previous question uh, that is uh, when uh, we have reacted with that is uh, butone. We have got to know that but uh, now here also it would be very much easy to understand but let us understand uh, that how can the reaction would take uh, or how can the reaction would occur so therefore the product the reactant that has been given to us is basically ch3 c ch3 double bond ch2 and this is the one that we will be reacted with hbr and uh, that also in presence of a peroxide that is sodium peroxide that is nao2 nao2 and now the reactant which is of the reagent which is basically uh, the one which consists of partially negative charge that will attack because it is been following um, Marconi of rule or it will show a peroxide effect so therefore the negative part of the region will attack that carbon carbon double bond atom over here which will consist of uh, more number of uh, hydrogen atom so therefore BR will attack over here while the hydrogen will attack over here so therefore the major product that we could get is uh, uh, this one that is CH3C because uh, this would be CH3 I have mentioned it in this way so this is CH3 and uh, this hydrogen would attack over here so making this to be have CH3 this RCH3CH3 while this is the one which should be attacked by the bromine atom so making this to be called as CH2Br while the major while the, this was the major product and talking about the minor product minor product will be the one which uh, will be a uh, tertiary uh, alkyl halide because this is the primary alkyl halide that we have got to know and talking about uh, that is this would give us like the previous one that we have did over here i would show you so in this case only the difference is the major would turn into minor and minor would turn into major so therefore i could write over here that is ch3 here i would write over here chbr and here it would be ch3 and here would be ch3 so making this to be called as a minor product so therefore the major product in this case is basically uh, we could say it as a uh, one bromo two methyl propane while talking about the minor product the minor product would be uh, we could say it as a uh, two bromo two methyl propane so that is the thing that we have did for uh, the reaction with hbr and uh, nano2 in presence of nano2 now let us move on with the next one That is we have to react it with HCl but uh, reaction with HCl uh, it will be similar to that of uh, the bromine that we have did in presence of a peroxide so the third one is reaction with that is HCl in presence of hydrogen peroxide that is H2O2 so the product that we could get because uh, uh, we could also write it as the product but let us react uh, the whole reaction so therefore this one would be uh, mentioned as ch3 c ch3 and it uh, was uh, double bond ch2 and that was reacted with hcl and that also in presence of a peroxide that is h2o2 and now the product that we would obtain uh, it would be similar to that of what we have did over here as you could see but instead of bromine we would write over here cl and instead of here also we would write over cl so these are the two possible products that we could get one would be major and one would be minor so therefore the uh, pro the possible product that would be ch3 ch here it would be ch3 and this would be ch2br or 
instead of BRB node, I don't see it because uh, chlorine has been used. And while talking about the another product, or the another possible product that we could get is CH3, C, Cl, CH3, and here also it would be CH3. So therefore, this one is the one which is a major product, while this is the one which is minor product. And talking about the name of this one, uh, again it would be same that what we have mentioned over uh, uh, in the previous question, but uh, the name of this of this halide would be chloro. So therefore, we could write it in this way that is uh, one chloro two methyl propane as a major product, and here it uh, we could write it as uh, two chloro two methyl propane. So that is the thing. It was very much easy. Now uh, let us understand the last reaction that uh, we have to do with. Uh, that is the fourth one. So reaction of uh, two methyl propene with H2S4 and H2 that is hydrolysis. So uh, the reactant is that is CH3. C I would write over here in this format. And for which we have to uh, react it with H2S4 and H2S4 can be written as H O S O 3 H and since nothing because water has been used and no kind of peroxide has been used so obviously we could say that this would follow Marconi of fruit and uh, that's the reason that we could see that the negative part of the region which is this one that will attach on the carbon atom which consists of less number of hydrogen atom so that's the reason that this whole thing will attach on this carbon atom and the hydrogen will attach on this carbon atom making the major product to be formed as CH3 C and here it would be basically uh, CH2 was been attached and because of the hydrogen that has been attacked over here so therefore this would be CH3 this would be CH3 as it is as I have written over here and this whole OSO3H can be written like this so this is the product that we would form and uh, talking about this thing then uh, the major product and the minor product would be also being mentioned over here in this case but uh, we are we have to do the hydrolysis process so let us see uh, what is the hydrolysis process that would take place over here and then we'll uh, move on to the next one so suppose if the hydrolysis process will take place in presence of h2o so obviously this would convert into alcohol and while this one would be basically uh, formed as or regenerated as h 2 so therefore the product that we get as a major product is basically ch3 ch3 i would write over here as oh so therefore this oh would attach over here making this to be called as a major product and um, the minor product would be the one which will follow anti of fruit so in this case as we could see that uh, the o so 3H that has been partially negative that has been attacking on that carbon atom which consists of less number of hydrogen. But if it follows anti Markovic of rule, so therefore this OSO3H will attach on this carbon atom and making to form a basically a kind of sulfonyl group that is attached on this CH2. And that's the reason that the hydrogen will attach over over here. So therefore, in that case, suppose if we do hydrolysis, so we will get uh, now in this case we are getting a tertiary uh, alcohol, but uh, in that case only because of in anti alcohol we know that the primary alcohol or any kind of primary chloride halide is been obtained. So here also the product has a chance to form basically this as the minor product. So this are the two products that we could get and among this only one would be the major one that is this one which is following the Markovnikov of rule and while the other one which is following the anti Markovnikov of rule so that would be called as a minor product. But what would be the name of the products? Talking about this one this is an alcohol and uh, basically tertiary alcohol so we are only concerned with the uh, that is uh, IPC name so the name of this would be basically 2 methyl uh, and again on second position we could say an alcoholic or an hydroxyl group so therefore the name of this would be 2 methyl propane 2 all while talking about this one this one would have a name because as you see on the second carbon atom this one could be the first second and third carbon atom and on second carbon atom we are observing ch3 making uh, the name in terms of an IPC as a uh, 2 methyl uh, propane 1 all so therefore this are the two alcohols and these are the two products that we have mentioned over here and one was the basically the ma major product and one is the minor product so we have followed the question and here also and hereby we have also discussed about all the kind of uh, that is uh, most of the kind of the reactions that are being showcased by the alkenes and we have also did a uh, that is reaction for ozonases also
So this were the main uh, that is preparations of different chemicals using alkene or we could say the chemical properties of alkene. So thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you have liked this video and you have got to know that um, an idea that is uh, how can we write the reactions also. So share this video with your friends and yes, don't forget to subscribe to channel. Thank you so much.